I present to you for the award of the degree of Doctor of Letters, Honoris Causa, Sir Tony Robinson. Known to millions around the world for his many television programs, film appearances and books, Sir Tony Robinson is rightly regarded as a national treasure. As you will all know, Sir Tony is well known for his portrayal of Baldrick in Blackadder, one of the most successful and well-loved comedy series in recent years. His work with Time Team was also prominent as the programme played a pivotal role in popularising archaeology and history across the UK. Although he describes himself as an amateur, he is a most informed and dedicated amateur. It is certain that many students have been inspired towards the study of these subjects at universities across the UK. The public may also have gained an understanding of why it is important that such subjects are supported in higher education. Sir Tony became closely involved with the university since his participation in the May Festival in 2016. The following year, he joined forces with composer Professor Paul Miller to create a Christmas concert to raise funds for cancer and dementia research at the University of Aberdeen. Sir Tony and Professor Miller wrote The Three Ships, a Christmas story which offered a unique interpretation of the traditional nativity. Sir Tony explained, I thought if we could create something that addresses modern day issues but gives us the opportunity to sing the carols we all love, that would be something really special. And they certainly achieved that with huge audiences of alumni and other guests at St. Macleth Cathedral in Aberdeen and St. Marlebone's Parish Church in London. Pro Chancellor, for his long standing contribution to the creative arts as an actor, director, and writer, in celebration of his role in popularizing archaeology and history, and in recognition of his charitable interests and continuing relationship with and support for this university, I invite you to confer upon Sir Tony Robinson the degree of Doctor of Letters Honoris Causa. Egrite literarum doctorum et magistrum, constituo creo procrame renuncio, et in signum capitum hoc pileo orno, quod uc filet vasunque sit deum optimum maximum precor. Professors, staff members, graduates, guests, noisy relatives at the back. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I will. I am in awe being here, just as any and all of my ancestors would have been in awe at being here. We were working class EastEnders. We didn't go to university. My dad could have gone, he won a place at London University, but he was the second son of working class parents and they couldn't afford it. So he got an ordinary job, then the war came, he was called up, joined the RAF and was stationed here in Aberdeen and Peterhead for five years, patching up Spitfires, 
so that posher kids could fly up in the air and shoot down Germans. My dad loved the war years, not because of the fighting, but because of the jazz band. There are a lot of Canadian forces in Northeast Scotland at the time, and they had a band, and they didn't have a pianist, and my dad volunteered, and he didn't know anything at all about playing the piano, and he learnt to play great boogie piano by touring the pubs and church halls of Aberdeenshire, getting excitement, getting fun, and having the potential for copping off with local girls. <laughs> so if today there are any 75-year-olds around here, your grandparents may be, who look suspiciously like me. <laughs> Don't be alarmed, the male members of my family have always been generous with their gene pool. <laughs> to me, this is not just a university event, this is a family reunion. Thank you, brothers and sisters. <laughs> so my dad didn't go to university, and I didn't either, because I was lazy, disrupted, and for me, education was like the Berlin Wall. There was me over there, there was what I wanted to do and be over there, and in between was education, the Berlin Wall, patrolled at the top by teachers with machine guns. <laughs> to me, Education was the thing that prevented me from being the person that I wanted to be. It wasn't until I was in my mid-twenties that I realised, rather than preventing me from being what I wanted to be, it was the means whereby I could get what I wanted to be. But by then it was far too late for me. So like the rest of my family, university has always been mysterious, exotic, unobtainable, a Harry Potter world full of spires, ravens, and bumbling old professors who don't know where their glasses are even when they're wearing them. <laughs> and yet you collude in this fantasy to some extent, don't you? With your spires and your gowns and your funny hats. But I don't laugh at that. I think it's really important. I think it's really special that you know how important you are and we know how important you are because you really are alchemists. You transform dross into gold. The dross is the gawky, awkward, emotionally stunted, dysfunctional people you were just three years ago. <laughs> the gold is the mature men and women you're about to be who can address the challenges of a world which is moving at the speed of light and what a terrifying world it is. Most of the people I know believe these are the darkest of times. White walkers now stride the land <laughs> and their names are species collapse, global warming, epidemics, fundamentalism, vain, ignorant popinjay politicians, and all the rest. There are not just four horsemen of the apocalypse now, there are a hundred. And who is there to save us? Where is our Jon Snow? Where's our Arya Stark? Where's our Sensor Stark? Where's the boring one in the pushchair Stark? They've all moved on to other TV series. <laughs> but we can't. We're stuck in this TV series. And the only people who can help us are ourselves and our children and our children's children and our children's children's children. And I won't go on any farther because the odds are there won't be any more to add to that list. We need universities because we need leaders of the future who will be visionaries, who will, in the best sense of the word, be entrepreneurial and will be confident, who can respond 
to the threats of the new dark age, who can challenge and change and modify its most terrifying features. That may sound ridiculous to you, given that you spend all of your time firefighting, worrying about the cost of student accommodation, of how many students there will be after Brexit, about the drift southwards, about how to provide access for people in the town, for the demands on your purse which are constantly being made on you and there's never enough. But what I'm saying is, if you don't do your job properly, the species will die out and it's your fault. So no pressure there. But in a funny way, I am saying that, aren't I? I know there is no easy short-term fix in education, certainly not to narrow down the courses and syllabuses and cut subjects. That's the philosophy of Michael Gove and the secretaries of state that followed him. I believe it's a malign philosophy. It's the opposite of an appropriate philosophy for the future. And that's not an arbitrary attack on Michael Gove. All cokeheads talk bollocks at 100 miles an hour. <laughs> I just don't understand why he felt he needed it. The reality is we don't know what skills our society will require in 20 years or even five years. But we do know what attributes will be required. We know we'll need forensic leaders, leaders who can identify a phenomenon, can divide it up into its various parts and reassemble it for the future. We know that we'll need leaders who can contextualise, who'll understand the relationship between different phenomena and between those phenomena and us, and between us and our history, and between our history and our future. We know that we'll need leaders who can communicate well, can communicate their thoughts, not spew out sentence after sentence of your nose and ers and dars and amazing balls. We need people who will be able to use language well. Any subject that there is, is simply part of life and it's important if it's taught well. All aspects of life are represented in all the subjects there are, whether it's algebra, or engineering, or magic, or astrophysics, or tap dancing, or media, or Swedish massage, all have skills which are transferable and are useful for the future. Who knows, maybe our world will be saved by tap dancing astrophysicists. Our universities have been through dark times before, through plague and heretic burning, and the Little Ice Age, and terrible, terrible wars, and our universities have always survived and been blazing beacons in a morass of ignorance. As your newest PhD, I urge you to be innovative, to be subversive, radical, creative, and courageous. Not because it's cool, but because it's vital. I thank you for my doctorate, and my gown, and my funny hat. I'm deeply flattered with the award. Please carry on what you do, but do it wonderfully. As a member of a family who were outsiders, but now insiders, I thank you. Our future is in your hands. I feel over the moon at receiving my degree from Aberdeen Uni. Look, here it is. This is it. It's great. I think it's particularly wonderful to be in such a historic atmosphere with everybody tarted up in their funny robes. And they just make it all feel special, because it is, and the university is special. Three or four years ago, I was asked by the university 
just to read a lesson at one of the services of Nine Lessons and Carols that was taking place down in London where the um, music department were able to show off their skills in one of the London churches. I agreed to do so and I got very friendly with the uh, Professor of Musical Composition, Paul Miele, and uh, have continued that relationship ever since, including writing the libretto for quite an extended piece of music which was performed at uh, uh, Aberdeen Cathedral last year. So it's, it, it, it's widened and deepened my relationship with the university. My advice to future graduates is none of us know what is going to happen in the next 20 years or indeed even in the next five years. But what we do know is the kind of qualities that we'll need. Flexibility, the need to contextualise, to understand all the phenomena around us and how they relate to our world and our future. And communication skills, so that we can all communicate the wonderful new ideas that we've got to combat the worst excesses of the future and exploit the good bits.